politicians are normally guided by their political persuasion. They follow party policy, philosophy and public opinion. But the man we're about to meet says he was guided by something else during his 20 years in Australian federal politics. He represented the large electorate of Wilmot in Tasmania, a Liberal member who could best be described as a rebel. But what Max Burr was not known as was a man who listened to outside influences. He did, however, listen to things he called urges. Max Burr heard voices in his head. Perhaps you could say Max Burr is unpredictable, but the former MP says he's always had a guide, a force he's never quite been able to fathom. It is an irresistible urge that comes into my, my mind. It's not, I wouldn't describe it as voices in the background or in, in the distance. It's just an irresistible urge that I must do something. And that something is then made clear. Uh, the something uh, in the first instance was study for it to be an accountant. It was to resign from your job to resign from another job, to stand for Parliament. And these irresistible urges keep on coming through that that is what I must do. And uh, I guess and I keep on getting the urge, this is what you've got to do, this is what you've got to do. And it keeps coming back again and again and again until finally I make the decision to do it. One of those urges eventually took him to Canberra in 1975 as the new Liberal member for the old Tasmanian seat of Wilmot. But it was an agonising decision made after a sleepless night more than a year before. It, it was like a buzzing. This, this particular night was like a buzzing in my ears. Um, with a dimension... Oh, dear, oh dear. Almost like being in a vortex, you know, where, 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 the, where the whole, my whole head and it seemed my whole body was just in a, in a, in a constant spin. Um, and I, I was actually being manipulated within that vortex and, con and all the time going through my brain was, you must stand for the, uh, nominate for, 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 for the Liberal Party for the next election. And this was just constantly surging through all of my thought patterns while my body seemed to be in this spinning vortex. And that went on for something like five hours. I, I simply didn't want to because it mean, meant giving up any security, all the security that I had, because to nominate for, for any political party meant that I had to resign my job uh, and I had no other form of income of any sort, I had no savings of any sort, and I had two kids and a mortgage and all the rest of those things. So, but these, whatever these urges were, just wouldn't let me sleep I, uh, until I did, and I had one hell of a night. And eventually I made the decision about half past six that morning that, OK, I would nominate. And then I finally got to sleep. The Maverick MP went on to represent Tasmanians for the next 18 years. But in 1990, there was another urge, another decision. He would not be contesting the next election. This was how he explained it back then. <laughs> the main reason, I guess, is a personal reason in that uh, uh, I'm just tired. Uh, I'm worn out. But when we spoke to him, his reason was much more remarkable. I didn't have another urge like that until 1988. And the urge then was get out of Parliament. Get out of Parliament. Now, to be frank with you, if you ask me the logical question, why did you go into Parliament, I couldn't tell you. If you ask me, what can you identify that you achieved in Parliament, I couldn't tell you. If you ask me, why did I get out of Parliament, I couldn't tell you because I don't know. All I know is that these inner urges come within me that that is what I've got to do, and I don't know why. And those urges didn't just guide him professionally. It seems they controlled his private life too. One of those urges was to divorce that first wife, my first wife, who'd been so understanding. 
We were married for 16 years and in that time never had an argument, not one argument. And yet the urge came to me that I had to divorce her. And we did and we divorced and still didn't have an argument and she's still one of my best friends. And I had the urge then to marry another woman. That other woman, my present wife Rosalind, had the same urges to marry me. And she has been subsequently instrumental in, uh, if you like, introducing me in, in, in various ways to books that I have to read. Um, to the present program that I'm undertaking, which is a volunteer overseas aid project. And, and, and Rosalind has been instrumental in opening up a whole new spectrum of things that are becoming known to me. So that these urges now are not only coming through my inner motivation, if you like, but also through Rosalind. And I'm responding uh, uh, as much to, uh, <coughs> to my urges as what I am to hers. I guess I have always accepted that these motivations, these urges, as I, I, I term them, are spiritually, uh, or, or have a spiritual origin to them. I've never doubted that, and I've never disputed it. I've simply gone along with it, because I, I have the view that whatever form of intelligence it is that is, um, that is designing all of these moves, uh, knows a, an awful lot more than I do. So I'm not going to buck against the system, if you like. I'm just simply going to go along with it. I don't know what's at the other end. I guess the bottom line is that it just boils down to faith. <laughs>